The fake news mainstream media is imploding as their ad revenue has begun to completely disappear. That's right. We're going to take a look at what's perhaps the single most adversely affected victim of this coronavirus, and that's the mainstream media, and how their efforts at blaming President Trump for the virus pandemic has backfired to their own disastrous detriment. You're going to absolutely Love it. Greetings, everyone. Awesome to be with you. As always, Dr. Steve here, super safe and sound lockdown Thursday, each and every one of you. If this is your first time here at this channel, we post two videos a day, analyze the current events, analyze some super awesome conservative trends so you can live in the present in light of even better things to come. So you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel. You're going to absolutely love interacting with this online community of conservatives from all over the world. We're an international community here. Also, for everyone, before you do anything else, make sure to click on the link below and check out the awesome new video that we put together just for you featuring our brand new Turley Talks Insiders Club. We're so thankful to those of you who've already signed up. This is something we put together just for you. We've received countless emails over the past several months of how you can get closer access to me and my work analyzing the rise of a new conservative age and how you could be directly part of a massive group of conservatives from all over the world to network with, and your wish is our command. That's precisely what you're gonna get by joining our Insiders Club. By becoming a member, you get even more exclusive access to me and our journey together into this new conservative age we're embarking on. Each week, you'll get a special deep dive video reserved solely for our Insiders members. You get access to our private Facebook group that features conservatives from all over the world that you can directly network with. Plus, you get my monthly reading list to keep you updated on the best and most enriching information that's out there. You get a number of bonus videos, and you even get some awesome accessories like our Turley Talks Tumblr to drink your coffee in or whatever your beverage of choice happens to be. So don't wait. Make sure to click on that link below. Watch the video of the Turley Talks Insiders Club to get a good, fuller sense of what you're going to be a part of. I think you're really, really love it. It's a privilege to have put it together for you, and it'll be a privilege to journey with you into this new conservative age together, all right? All right, let's get into this. This is just going to make your day, all right? Schadenfreude time. It's being widely reported that the ad revenue that's thus far sustained the fake news mainstream Marxist media is drying up and disappearing fast. The prince of fake news, the New York Times, is reporting to their investors that ad revenue was going to drop, in their words, in the mid-teens in the first three months of this year. In fact, things are so bad at the fake news times that President Trump couldn't help but take a shot at their falling revenue. Trump tweeted out, Advertising in the failing New York Times is way down. Washington Post is not much better. I can't say whether this is because they're fake news sources of information to a level that few can understand or the virus is just plain beating them up. Fake news is bad for America. Go Donald Trump. Now, what's so interesting here is that the fake news designation for the New York Times is not just coming from President Trump. I don't know how many of you heard about the story that the fake news times recently, quote, reported alleging that President Trump was profiting financially off of the treatment for the coronavirus because he had a financial stake of as little as $99 in a French pharmaceutical company that was producing the anti-malarial drug that he was advocating. As the Daily Caller's reporting, the Times reported this without mentioning several details, like the fact that President Trump's personal stake in this French pharmaceutical company, Sanofi, that produces the anti-malaria drug, is estimated to be as small as $99 that Trump earns some income from three family trusts that are administered independently by J.P. Morgan. You all know the, I'm sure many of you know, the investment bank and wealth management firm. And these trusts are in part invested in mutual funds that themselves are partially invested in companies that produce the hydroxychloroquine. But Trump's total financial stake in these companies is completely indirect via the mutual funds. So some of you may have equivalent portfolios in your funds. And they omitted that all of this is administered through three family trusts that President Trump doesn't even control. And that as a generic drug, hydroxychloroquine is unlikely to provide any one company with significant profits compared to any other proprietary drugs, right? Drugs that are patented and are the property, the sole property of a single manufacturer and distributor. That's not hydroxychloroquine. It's a generic drug. 
And so as a result of these blatant omissions, that prompted the Snopes fact checker to brand the article published by the New York Times as mostly false. And you know, New York Times is officially a fake news outlet, right? And I've already seen, um, I've seen this piece, this hit piece by the New York Times posted by a bunch of liberal friends on Facebook. That's the only reason why the New York Times article exists. It's a desperate attempt to make President Trump look bad. So the New York Times is officially fake news, right? Of course, we've always known that. But what what makes matters even worse is that their ad revenue has already been dropping uh, officially now uh, for months. Advertising had fallen by nearly 7% for the New York Times as of the third quarter of last year. Digital ad revenue had dropped 5.4%. This is why their stock's been going down of late, as I at least as I understand it. So that's why I think the president is right in questioning whether this drop in ad revenue for the New York Times was due solely to the coronavirus. It appears to have at least been in response in some part, to the pattern of fake news coming out of the Times. It's just par for the course for a bunch of left-wing activists disguised as journalists or not. We just did a video the other day on that left-wing nut, Mara Gay, who's a New York Times editorial board member. Do you remember her? She had a little problem doing math on live television on MSNBC, where she claimed that if Mayor Mike Bloomberg spent $500 million on ads— and the United States popu- population is 327 million. That means that if Bloomberg had instead divided up that money spent on ads equally among the American population, every single citizen could have gotten a million dollars. <laughs> so he spends $500 million, all right, on ads. There are over 300 million people in the United States. So instead of spending the money on ads, which I think the New York Times would dream of right now, He could have given each person in the United States a million dollars. Do you remember that? I mean, yeah, that Mara Gay, that math genius. Well, she recently tweeted out a truncated version of President Trump's remarks to governors on the coronavirus. Trump said on a teleconference call that state efforts to contain the coronavirus pandemic should involve seeking medical equipment from wherever the governors can find them. Don't rely solely on the federal government. Right, that sounds relatively rational, doesn't it? Make sure to try to get try to get as many respirators, ventilators, all the equipment yourselves will be backing you. But if you can get this equipment more directly and more cheaply yourselves, well then make sure to do that. Mara Gay, basic math Mara, seems also to have a problem with basic reading comprehension because she tweeted out just the first part of Trump's quote from the transcript of the teleconference call where he told them to get the respirators, ventilators, and other equipment themselves. Try getting it all yourselves. And then she had the gall to put as her fake news comment, Trump told governors they're on their own. He's not going to help them. They're on their own. It's a bold-faced lie, pure and simple. She lied. She doesn't know how to do math. She lies, all right? So, and why would he do that anyway? <laughs> well, you don't have to go any farther, you know, than a video we did a, b- a lit back to answer that question. In the midst of these left-wing, and minds of these left-wing activists disguised as journalists, they all think Trump is evil. They all think literally orange man bad. This is a consequence of Trump derangement syndrome, where critical thinking gets replaced with outrage porn. And basic math, Mara seems to be ma- majoring in that. Now, the New York Times is a fake news outlet, plain and simple. We've always known that. And so it's just sweet justice to see their ad revenue begin to shrivel up and disappear. But it's not just the New York Times. It is happening all across the fruited plain of mainstream fake news media. BuzzFeed has instituted and across the board pay cuts as even it's, it's seeking to keep its Brazilian and German divisions afloat. In fact, ad revenue for the second quarter is predicted to fall short of projections by an astonishing 50%. Sports Illustrated and The Street, they laid off 31 of the 330 staffers after taking projected revenue hit of upwards of $30 million. In fact, we did a video last week on the hundreds of so-called journalists, like we would prefer, prefer to refer to them as left-wing activists disguised as journalists, but hundreds have been laid off as a result of the 
the the coronavirus pandemic that they've desperately been trying to blame President Trump on. As of the last two weeks, it's being reported that the pandemic shutdown was speeding up the collapse of local newsrooms. So papers like the Detroit Metro Times have had to slash their staff by 50%. Because if you think it through, this coronavirus is particularly devastating to local news media since there's nothing to report on anymore. All the local events have been canceled. All the shops are basically closed down. There's nothing really to report on. And so their ad revenue is drying up. No one's advertising with them anymore. So local media is imploding. The New York Times is imploding. And even before the virus, Business Insider recently reported on the amount of media jobs that were lost. We've talked about this just in the year 2019. At that time, it was around 7,800 jobs, nearly 8,000 media jobs evaporated, gone, which was far more than the 5,000 jobs that were slashed between the years 2014, 2017. In other words, more jobs have been lost in the mainstream media world in 2019 alone than the last four years prior to that combined. It's an utterly astonishing job loss. Among the vis- victims, of course, CNN. They had to they slash 100 jobs. BuzzFeed uh, slashed 200. We mentioned Vice. Um, they lost 265 jobs before the virus. NBC slashed nearly 100 jobs. Washington Post Express got rid of 20. Think progress completely closed up. Not much progress going on there. So I'm very, very happy to report that the fake news media is indeed proving to be perhaps the single most adversely affected victim of this pandemic. A pandemic. They've all the while tried to pin on President Trump, the great slayer of fake news. It doesn't get more ironic than that. (laughs) Now, before you go, you definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on President Trump's defunding of the World Health Organization and the continued implosion of globalist structures everywhere. I think you're going to be absolutely amazed at it. So make sure to click on the link and I will see you over there. God bless.